everyone. Welcome back to Card Voyant. I'm Chris and I'm your Card Voyant. And today I'm back not with the numbers yet. I will do another video on the energy numbers, the angel numbers shortly, just within the next couple of days. Um, we'll do fours. But today um, I wanted to talk about tarot itself. I've had several people reach out to me asking about um, classes or, you know, learning tarot. And I've thought about doing that a lot. I haven't put together classes yet because honestly, I didn't know like how much of an interest there would be. And also until now, I haven't really had time to do it. So if you're interested in that, um, let me know in the comments and we, we can go from there and put something together. But meanwhile, uh, here's a little bit of a lesson that hopefully will help you in your tarot journey, especially if you're just starting out. If you've been you know, working with tarot for a long time, this is probably things that you know, but um, maybe there will be a little bit of a different insight. What I want to talk today about today, or beginning to talk about, because there's a lot um, in tarot, but I did want to talk about symbolism. Um, of course, the cards themselves are symbolic. Everything about them is symbolic. Um, you know, tarot in general um, is a tool, and it's a connection tool. And so the, the symbolism isn't meant to, like, trip you up or to, you know, throw you off or, like, make you search for these really hidden meanings. They're part of the tool of allowing you to connect with your guides, um, with the, the spirits who are sort of around you and help you with, you know, universal um, love and wisdom. So that's why we use tarot. For so um, I thought that because there's so much and honestly, you could you could do classes and classes and classes just on symbolism. So um, what I wanted to talk about today, starting off with learning about symbolism in tarot, is color. So let's, let's talk about color. Color, obviously, is in all of the tarot cards, every single one. But I think that talking about them, uh, just mentioning it, because I'll just talk about colors in general, in relation to the major arcana is a great place to start because it, it does have such a depth of meaning. Um, in these cards, uh, as it does in all cards, but this is a good reference point is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Uh, it's not the way that I would think of it, but I thought it was the best way to lay it out. I tend to start with like white and then work through to black, but let's take it just in alphabetical order so that it's easy. And if you need to come back to it, like you know, find your place in this video, and that might be an easy way to do it. Black. Now, black is not prevalent in the um, in the major arcana, but in in any of the cards, except for a very few, and you'll see why. I mean, when you think of black, sometimes you think of sort of this nightfall. Um, like this sort of mysterious, dark, you know, it's like a little kind of scary. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because it's really not that at all. I mean, it does have this heavy feeling in the cards where it's very prevalent, but it speaks often of like wisdom and experience and sometimes like uh, gaining a maturity, but almost like a it can almost feel like a force upon you, like you need to learn this. And so there's this, this very sort of cloak-like feel to black in tarot cards. Where it's prevalent, where you might see it the most, where it's like, oh, it's so stark, is in the devil card. Um, also in the 10 of swords, but it is this feeling of being closed in being forced to reckon with things. Um, and that's that's what's happening, certainly in the devil card. Um, but black really has to do with this gaining of experience, this sort of, you are here and you are forced to reckon with these this, this wisdom that you seek, but maybe you're stuck, you know, like the 10 of swords or the devil card. 
It also has to do with um, opposites. You know, many of the tarot cards are deal in opposites. Um, what we think of as opposites, what this really is talking about is the two sides and bringing together because the universe, tarot, uh, everything that we sort of talk about in gaining wisdom has to do with gaining unity, with unifying two sides of things. You'll see this in the high priestess cards where the columns, she's got two columns beside her, one black, one white. This is talking about her ability to bring things together. You'll see it in the chariot card where there are the two sphinxes that are pulling the chariot. Well, they're not tied to it, but we know that they're instrumental in, uh, in pulling it forward. And this too talks about um, unification, bringing together these two sides. It can be light and darkness. It can be spiritual and physical. It can be um, emotional and mental, all of these different sides. But this talks about unity. Again, I'm just giving you an overview because you can go much deeper with all of this. In the death card, it's very interesting to me because you have black, but it's really not prevalent. I mean, uh, the, the figure on the horse is in black, but we see this as um, part of the journey because black does talk about this crossing over, this uh, introduction into eternity. So it's like this death sequence that brings us to another place but so much of the death card is white there's a lot of white in it this and this again is this duality this transformation from one to the other this bringing together of the two worlds let's talk about blue now blue is prevalent in many many of the cards and that's perfectly makes makes perfect sense because blue is talking about the eternal uh the psychic the spiritual all of these non-physical world kind of things so you'll see it in many many cards when we're sort of trying to make this connection the high priestess wears a, a, a cloak of blue the hermit is surrounded by blue it's seen with uh, in the star card, the moon card, the judgment card, all of, uh, you know, so many cards, this blue is just there, prevalent, talking about uh, connection to the spiritual world. Now, blue also is very important because of the, it's the color of water. Water in tarot always talks about the spiritual, the, uh, the non-physical world, the psychic, our intuition. Um, our higher selves. And many of the cards have this blue that may or may not be water, but sometimes mimics water, speaks to water. Um, you'll see this in the Nine of Cups, where there's a sort of a table with these um, cups laid out, but the drape on the table or the tablecloth is blue. And it mimics water and it talks about the connection, uh, the eternal connection, the psychic connection, the, um, the spiritual connection. So blue is also prevalent like in mountains, but that'll talk again about gaining this height where we're, we are better connected, right? We, we've scaled some sort of height that brings us to a, a better connected self, our, our own intuition, this uh, unity, again, of spiritual and physical. So let's talk about brown for a minute. Now, brown, you know, it's funny because it's not, it's not prevalent, but when it is, it talks very much about earth, uh, about our connection to the earth. Um, you know, the wands are kind of a, a brown color, kind of a golden brown. And they talk so much about making our way um, in the physical world. Interestingly, uh, um, pentacles are not brown. They're this yellow color. We'll get to that. Uh, but where you do see brown, it's very much about um, the physical world, sometimes about fertility. You'll see it in um, slightly in like cards like the Empress. We're talking about Major Arcana again. 
Um, the moon card where uh, we have this sort of dog and, and coyote, sort of this domesticated and this feral um, animals. And the, the dog has this sort of brown earthy color that talks about our connection to the very, the physical world. You'll see it just in the ground in a couple of cards. And that is very much about our physical connection, our, our earthly connection, our life here on earth. Sometimes the brown in tarot uh, relates to certain things on the card, whether it's uh, the walking stick of the hermit or uh, the dog in the moon or the mane of the lion in the strength card, the tree in the hanged man. And these are all our connections to very earthly things. So the brown in tarot does just tend to talk about earthly life and our connection to it, the things that get us through it, all of those kinds of uh, very tangible earthly things. So let's talk about green. Um, green in tarot, lovely, just like you would think of it in the world, very much about um, hope, fertility, new life, regeneration. Uh, it's it's um, the color of, in some ways, the uh, promise of life, physical life. And it does talk so very often in comforting terms, in regrowth terms, in, in possibility terms, in hope terms. It's easy to see in the greenery of the world card that talks about, again, it's like this unification, the physical and the non-physical. Again, this is just a brief overview. There's a lot that you could say about each of these colors and their placement in each card. If we were to go through each card and talk about all of the symbolism con contained in that particular card. All right, so let's talk about purple. Now, purple isn't a color that is uh, prevalent in a lot of cards. You don't see it like again and again and again, like you do some colors. But it is um, important for certain cards, and it does have a certain uh, connotation to it. You see it in the cloak of the angel in the lover's card. You see it very um, prominently in the justice card, behind the justice, uh, the figure in the justice card. You see it in the world card the final card of the major arcana. You see a little bit of it in the judgment card, the angel again in the judgment card. So purple has to do with, you know, we it's, it's a royal color, right? But it does have to do with uh, sort of majesty. It's very much this idea of uh, acquired um, understanding of cosmic kind of consciousness it has to do with wisdom and spiritual connection, which is why you see it so prominently in related to the angels that we see uh, illustrated in the tarot. Also in the world card, it drapes the figure in the world card. Again, the final card of uh, the major arcana. So it's kind of this fulfillment card. And it's very much then about being draped, being wrapped in this wisdom, in this spiritual connection, in uh, divinity, and in this kind of higher values. So let's talk about red, because red is one of those colors that's all over tarot. It's, it's in so many cards. I mean, it is sort of this life force, this vitality color, but it's very much about passion, what we care about, um, energy, right? This very strong, like push forward, almost um, you would call it like an aggressive energy in a very good way. Aggression doesn't have to be violent, right? It can be something very good. It propels us forward. You see it in anywhere where you have um, passionate and fire that's important, this sort of um, very... Um, Mars-like energy, masculine energy we'd think of because we tend to 
in this society, in the world, think of uh, this aggression, aggressive energy, even in the, its most positive sense, as being masculine. Um, and that's just that's just societal. I mean, that's not like the uh, eternal truth of it, uh, because of course there aren't masculine and feminine in the non-physical world. You'll see it in the magician's cloak, right? And I, what I love, well, we'll talk about this when I when I talk about white. But there's this beautiful mixing of the energies here. You see it in the empress's uh, pillow behind her, in the emperor, his cloak. Everything about the emperor is red, this, this Mars energy, this very strong energy. The hierophant has red. The lover's angel has red. The, the angel in the temperance card, the wings are red. You see it in the justice card, passion fire, determination, caring, right? Um, this idea of moving forward in things that are important to you, that are passion, that you're passionate about. So you see it in many of the minor arcana cards, especially in like a lot of wands cards, but throughout tarot. So it's really easy to, I think, to associate red with the feelings that it is because it's very fiery and it's very passionate in, in all of its forms. Um, you see it in the sun card in this sort of banner of triumph. Um, and that talks about, you know, coming to uh, understand and move toward the things that we're passionate about, that we care about, that we want to achieve, that are uh, the deepest part of our hearts and souls. So let's talk about white. Um, this is like where I would normally start because white is uh, so prominent in the fool card, the zero card of the major arcana, the card that we start with. Um, traditionally, some people like to end with the fool and the major arcana, but it doesn't matter. It works either way. Um, there is this white, the sun in the fool card is white. The, the little dog is white. The mountains are white tipped and White in tarot talks about purity. It talks about pure intention, right? It talks sometimes about like a kind of innocence, but an innocence that really is talking about being non judgmental. Um, it's about rebirth. We see it really prominently in the judgment card that is a card about rebirth. Um, even the figures in the judgment card are white with this tinge with blue. Again, this connection, right? Because the blue, remember, we're talking about spirituality. We're talking about connection. We're talking about the non-physical world. And here we're talking about white in the sense of the very physical world, but it's about our attempt at uh, sort of reclaiming that connection, that innocence, that pure heart, that pure intention that uh, most um, propels us forward as we try to move through the world. When we, when we move through the world with pure intention, it is uh, sort of pushed or backed by the universe. And that's what these cards speak of. Many figures such as the magician, such as the female figure in the strength card, such as the angel in the temperance card, um, they wear white because this is talking about your pure intention, your, you know, it's like this birth or even rebirth of ideas of heart, of soul, of connection, right? Many figures have parts of their um, clothing or the things that surround them that is white. And these often blend uh, with our passion. So the magician is probably the most obvious um, example of this because his cloak, his, his coat or cape is red. And then the, his uh, clothing underneath that is white. Very much this blending of uh, intentional um connection uh, combined with this fiery earth passionate I'm going to do it kind of energy it's really lovely you know you also think of white as uh, you know peaceful 
when you see there are doves in some of the cards and there's this very obviously this uh, peaceful connotation to that. Um, think of uh, a white flag, not as a flag of surrender, but a, sa a sign of a flag of desiring peace. White can also talk about fresh starts. I mean, white is a very blank canvas, right? So it's a it's a all encompassing, beautiful color. There are many um, stars in the the tarot that are this white color, this connection to purity, to our soul, to our soul's desires. I mean, it's very um, uh, beautiful. And when you see it in this context of pure intention, it defines the things that are going on, the other things that are going on in the card or, you know, in, in a client um, that you're talking to or reading for or for yourself. So finally, um, let's talk about yellow. I, you know, I didn't really talk about orange too much, but think of orange as this sort of transition from uh, yellow to red. Um, there are some things to say about orange, but um, for for this purpose, I think it's enough to focus on red and yellow separately. Think of, you know, you can see the way in the cards that orange sort of blends into that. So yellow. Now, whenever I see yellow in a card, and I've said this many, many times in readings, um, you know, it makes me feel positive happy, warm. I mean, you think of it as the sun being warmed by the sun or sunlight. Um, it, it also has an energy to it, it this um, idea of moving towards something positive. I mean, it's about power. It's about uh, intuition, even. It's about this idea of moving forward into the light. It's always, to me, this, even when you just see it in the sky, I mean, it's sunlight, it's warmth, it's the sunrise, it's new beginnings. You see it very prevalently as the sun in many cards, including the sun card, um, where it's this bright yellow. You see it even like in the moon card or many cards in which the moon is represented um, you see it in the background of many cards and the blending of the background of many cards because it talks about hope. It talks about moving forward. It talks about the warming light. It talks about the glow from within. Yellow to me is so positive. It's so um, instructional in letting us know that you know, there's always a, a dawn, even after the darkest moment. Again, the Ten of Swords, where there's this, you know, black clouds and this sort of horrible scene laid out before us. There's still the yellow. There's like a, a band of yellow in the background that talks about a new day, the start of a new day, new beginnings, possibility. And also this idea of growth, like being warmed by the sun and being allowed to um, flourish under its light. So there you have it, a very, very brief overview of colors in tarot. Uh, they're important, you know, so it's, it's nice to know, but I feel like with colors, at least, they're pretty easy to remember because they're quite uh, natural, intuitive, you know, that you would to think of yellow as warming and light and sunrise, that's not much of a leap, right? To think of white as purity and pure intention. I mean, that's something that we kind of assume. One thing that I haven't mentioned is colors as they relate to uh, chakra, but each, um, many of these colors, of course, they, they do, in fact, um, most. Uh, but but that is something, I think, for a deeper discussion. And it's not necessarily important as you begin to read like you can read without knowing each color and how it relates to uh certain chakras and what that means and you know the the planets that relate to that i mean there's a lot right there's there's a lot and that's the thing with tarot i think that some people get overwhelmed many people get overwhelmed because it seems like it's going to take forever to learn and there's you know there's so much to it 
and really it's it's uh, there is a lot to it but it's kind of you know it's it's open you can learn tons but you can you can start by just learning the very basics and the cards will still speak to you and when i say the cards I don't want to make the cards into something like magical that we think of in terms of like magic or, or witchcraft or something like that. Because again, they're tools for your guides to be able to speak to you easily, to give you, you know, sort of a hand, you know, um, to uh, provide you with guidance. That's the real thing, you know, and it, and again, so much of this is about unification and it does allow us to sort of unify with our own intuition and with our higher selves and with our guides. And that's, that's really important. And it's something that's happening um, in the world now, much of what we're seeing. That's, that's another discussion, um, but we can discuss that too. So there you have it. A little bit on color. If you would like to know more about, um, tarot in terms of like learning it for yourself, reading for yourself, let me know. Obviously I have, you know, the old videos, old, old now videos um, that are teaching you about um, the cards basically, but there, but that's a lot also. And I, that's why I, I don't know if um, people would be interested in classes because I feel like um even watching those videos, it might be overwhelming to think that there's like so much to every card. And believe me, there's so much to every card, but you don't have to know it all to begin. And, and I also should say, you will, as you learn tarot and start to use it, you will develop your own signs like certain things will come to mean, mean certain things to you again and again and again and this is just you connecting with your guides and your guides like getting how you read you know it's not like you're having like you know strangers all the time just pop in when you're trying to read tarot you're working with your guides and even if you're reading for clients you're working with your guides in connection with their guides so your guides can sort of facilitate this understanding of how you work with the cards individually and you'll develop that so it's it's not everything is cut and dry there's a lot of um you know interpretation and there's a lot of individual use of cards so don't be intimidated um if you want to learn more that's fine i work generally in teaching with this very standard rider weight deck but it lends itself to so many other decks. So, and I do want to kind of, I think maybe you tell me, do um, so maybe a series of videos on different decks and how I use them or even kind of what I think of them. <laughs> um, and not in a negative way because I have very few decks that I've worked with and they just kind of haven't worked out for me. Um, but that has more to do with me than the deck, I think. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you'd like to learn. Let me know if this is helpful. Uh, like I said, I will be back with um, a number four energy uh, video and then maybe um, some more Jacob's Journal, if that's also something that you're interested in. And maybe these sort of card deck reviews. There's so much going on. And... I still haven't begun my little adventure that I want to tell you about. And um, that's very, very exciting to me. It's been a long time coming and I'm talking like 50 years. So when I'll talk about it when I, when I initiate that, I will talk all about that. So until then, until next time, um, I will say that I also, that I opened up some readings and even, 30 minute readings, which I haven't done in a long, long time, but they're available on my website if you're interested. So with that, I will just say thank you again for watching. Please take care of yourself. Please take care of others. There are so many in need of assistance right now, physical assistance, love, light, prayers, compassion. And I hope we can all be there for each other. Until next time, bye for now.